Hello and uh, welcome to another video tutorial from Nellavision covering practical use of JavaScript. It's been a while since I last uploaded a video in this series, but you're really in for a treat this time because in the next couple of videos I'm going to show you how to make a dynamic image gallery or a content slider using a technology called Ajax. And here's an example showing the finished product we will uh, be making. You can see we got some image links up here and every time I click a link the link destination is just going to be loaded into a div below the links instead of directing the browser to the actual image and all this is happening without the page needing to be refreshed or reloaded and if we take a look in the source code here we can see that we don't even have to type any JavaScript into the HTML markup we just have to give the links a certain class name and then all the JavaScript is tucked away down here in a separate section of the document. This type of functionality also works very well with the navigation. You can see here in my own modest web page, I got a main navigation up here, but on one of the pages, I got a sub navigation down below. And the sub navigation is actually using the same technique to load HTML content into the site. And there's even a image gallery of one of the pages uh, using the exact same functionality. As you can see in the source code, our JavaScript is using an object called XML HTTP request. And that is the object which actually can load the external HTML into the page. And you can also see that, um, that we're using the href attributes of the links to specify what exact data we want to load uh, on each link. The way this works is that the, the hrefs are being passed on to a PHP uh, file which lives on the server and the only thing the PHP file is doing is wrapping some uh, image tags around the hrefs. That way the requested data is going to be returned as uh, HTML. Now this might look a lot to you like uh, embedding your links in an iframe but this is actually a much more flexible and sophisticated technique because the loaded content is an active element uh, in the document instead of an iframe where you can't access the content in any way. With this technique you can uh, apply CSS rules to the element or you can target it with your scripting. I've divided this tutorial into two videos and in the first part here, we're going to be looking at the JavaScript part. And for this script to work, we'll have to learn how to target elements with a certain class name. In previous tutorials, we've been uh, targeting the elements by IDs, but it's a little more complex to target elements by class names. And for the script to work, we will also have to learn about anonymous functions. Anonymous functions are functions without an identifier or a name. Instead, they are connected to a certain event. In our script, this event is an onClick event. Creating anonymous functions is actually very easy. So uh, let's start off by doing that. I've opened up my favorite editor, Dreamweaver. And you can see I've created a document which resembles what we've been working with so far. In these tutorials, you can see I got an element up here with an onClick attribute. This onClick uh, attribute is gonna call a function called do stuff, and that function is nested down here in our JavaScript, so that every time the user presses the link, uh, an alert box will pop up. But now I'm gonna remove the onClick attribute altogether, and instead I'm gonna uh, add the onClick uh, functionality in the script. So to start off with, I'll give the a tag an ID. I'll call it the bot because I got a dirty mind or because it's faster than to type the button. And then I'm just gonna get the element by ID as we've done many times before. So the element is now a JavaScript uh, object. And then I can add the onClick functionality to it down here by typing dot onClick. And in order to link uh, the onClick to a function, we are simply typing equal to, and then the uh, function 
And now we can actually remove the function name because we don't have to call the function anymore. But within the curly brackets, we still have the code we want to be executed. And I'm testing it in Chrome and we can see it works just like it's uh, supposed to. Please notice that we have no uh, JavaScript in our actual HTML markup now because that is one of the points with this whole tutorial. But in order to make this work on multiple links, we need to target the elements class names instead of the ID. In JavaScript, there's no such method as get elements by class name. But I'm going to show you how to collect all the links in an array and then uh, filter out the correct class names with something called a for loop and the good old if statement. In order to demonstrate that, I've just removed the old link with the ID and instead I'm going to create a bunch of links with the class name the special links. Then I'm just adding a break tag and for demonstration purposes I'll add a link below with another class name. Then I'm going to paste some magic runes in here down between the script tags. But do not worry, I'll explain every line. So let's just zoom in here and take it step by step. First of all, I'm declaring a variable called sl. And that variable is actually an array because it's containing multiple items. It's containing all the elements in the document with the tag name a, which means that all the links in the document is stored in this array. An array is, as I said, a variable which contains multiple items and every link in our array has an index or an unique number starting from zero. In the next line, we have our for loop. The for loop consists of two parts. Between the brackets here, we got the conditions, which determines how many times the loop is running. And in between the curly brackets, we have the code that will be executed for every time the loop is running. Let's take a closer look at the conditions. First, we have declared a variable called i, and we have given i a value of zero. This code here in the end increases this number for every time the loop is running. So the first time around the value of i is going to be 0, second time around it's going to be equal to 1, third time around it's going to be equal to 2 and so on. This goes on for as long as the value of i is less than the length of our array, meaning the number of links on the page. And every time that happens then this code here is going to be executed. And here we have uh, our if statement. And the if statement evaluates if the link in question every time around has the correct class name. And whenever that is true, then the onClick functionality is going to be added to the current link. You can see that every link in the array is represented by the name of the array followed by the index number in square brackets and by adding the variable i as our index number then we make sure that every link in the array with the correct class name gets the on click attribute and that will work no matter how many links you have on the page so now we have actually managed to uh, create a method to get elements by class name, even though there's no native JavaScript method for doing that. And in here, in the body of our anonymous function, we can now type the code that we want to be executed. Right now, I haven't typed in the actual AJAX call because I want to take it one step at a time. So I've just created an alert box with a string and the return false just prevents the browser from actually following the link. And when I run this in Chrome, you can see that all the links up here with the special class name are triggering the function. But if we click on the link with the other class name, then the browser is just following that link as normal. And this is actually the essence of modern web design because we now figured out how to separate our JavaScript 100% from the HTML markup. And that's really efficient because 
Then as a web developer, you can just hand over a link to a script and a class name. And then the web designers on the project or the webmaster or editors doesn't have to worry about the JavaScript at all. They can just be creating clean markup. Okay, that's about it for the first half of this tutorial here. And I know it uh, doesn't look like we've gotten very far, but we've actually managed to uh, cover all the client-side scripting. In the next part, we're going to be focusing on the server-side scripting. And that isn't actually even as complex as what we've been covering today, because the hardest part uh, of this is actually to grasp how the for loop works. And if you haven't quite gotten it yet, try to play around with the code a bit. And you can also find a lot of uh, help online because the combination of arrays and for loops is a very common technique and is uh, documented very well. There's a lot of good uh, resources out there where you can read about it. Just type arrays and for loops in your search engine and you'll get a lot of uh, qualified explanations. But for now, all I have left to say is thank you so much for watching. Hope you will catch the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe or comment below. If you have any suggestions or questions, I'll be happy to hear from you.